everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Live Better Now podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and uh, I have a special guest today. My guest today is Ray Singleton, singer, songwriter, musician, and public speaker from Charleston, South Carolina. In early 2020, a video of him serenading his wife went viral on the internet, and then he was on uh, The Ellen Show, surprised by Dwayne Wade himself. Um, and the reason why he was on The Ellen Show and a video of him singing went viral is not only because he has a beautiful voice, but also because his wife at the time was battling brain cancer. And uh, this was her second bout, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, yes, her second yes, bout yes. of brain cancer. Her first bout uh, was brain cancer back in 2013, and her tumor yep. was the size of an orange. This time around, the tumor was the size of a half dollar, yep. uh, which I, I don't know if a lot of people know the size of a half dollar because we don't see those often, but- um, <laughs> It's pretty big. It's pretty, it's pretty big. big. Pretty big. And uh, I wanted to get him on the podcast because this is a conversation that I don't have often, and it's something that's going to help me grow, and I know that he can- bring a lot of value to the audience and uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about, hopefully you guys that are listening can apply to your life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's not about counting the days. It's about making the days count. And um, this conversation, and I'm, I'm telling this to you now, Ray, is uh, yeah. I'm going to do my best to speak with the most empathy, respect, and sympathy I can. Absolutely. Uh, is, this is a little, I don't know if uncomfortable is the right word, but... It's different. It's unique. So tell, yeah. Elaborate on that a little bit. When other people are talking to you about this, like, how, how does it make you feel? Um, it's 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 surreal in some moments, man. Uh, for those of y'all who, who who don't know what we're talking about, my beautiful wife Rosalind Royal uh, Singleton, she passed away uh, November fifteenth, two thousand and twenty-two, literally a few months ago uh, after a, a massive bout with glioblastoma. So after her second brain surgery. It had progressed from stage three to stage four. Uh, glioblastoma multiforme is the name of it. And she fought tooth and nail. She she smiled. She brought joy to others. And ultimately, she went to uh, she went to a better place than than this right here. Uh, so yeah. So what that's that's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am a thirty now thirty four year old widow. My birthday was uh, two days ago, man. Yeah, so happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday, brother. <laughs> Thank you, man. But yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a 34 year old widow in a position and in 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 situation that I never thought I never pictured this for my life. So there's there was no way to prepare for this. There was no advice anyone else could give me. You just gotta you just gotta literally deal <laughs> handle the cards you dealt. That's what you gotta do. And how did Roslyn deal with this? What was her mindset and her perspective going through all this treatment? Oh, she was she was superwoman, man. She was uh she she was superwoman. She was five five. She had tattoos all over her arm, short hair. Um, she was a Navy veteran. She had the mouth of a sailor. Uh uh F F word was her second favorite word in the dictionary. But she loved God. She was in church with me every Sunday. Um, and she had faith that was unbelievable, man. Like the, the story I always tell about her is the night before her third brain surgery, she was sitting downstairs and she's packing a backpack with uh, snacks and, and goldfish. And, and she's telling me to bring her house slippers because she don't like the robe at the hospital. Like, think about that faith. She never had a thought of maybe I won't make it out of this brain surgery. Maybe I will be different after. No, she knew, hey, whatever these doctors got to do, get this stuff out of my head so I can get this done and go on with my life. That's that's the confidence and the faith. She was, she was superwoman, bro. I I get nervous going to the dentist. Like, you got you to gotta drug me up to go to the dentist, bro. <laughs> hey. Oh. She, was, she was going into brain surgery chilling whistling oh my gosh that is uh the epitome of strength the epitome of faith yeah and, you know failure failure wasn't an option in that moment mm -hmm. it, it wasn't it crossed her mind do you think there was ever a doubt in her mind 
Um, I I imagine so. I mean, every, every I mean, Superman has his kryptonite tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we're hey. we're dealing with life. Like, what that girl wanted to do was live. And you tell you she you go to the doctor, and the doctor tells you, hey, you got a you got a tumor on your brain. You 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 damn right. There was some doubt in her mind. Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But the doubt did not outweigh the faith, man. Because when she walked into these chemotherapy treatments, the nurses would light up. She would be happy about getting the ginger ale and some and some and some crackers and a warm blanket. Like okay. she she made the hospital feel like a like a hotel, man. She was she was superwoman. There's no other way to des- describe her. Now, did you feel a sense? I I, mean, I can imagine you felt a sense of obligation to be strong. I mean, I I watched your Ellen the first Ellen interview. Yeah. And- uh, when Ellen asked her the question about, you know, how she's doing with this and, and towards the end of uh, what she said is, you know, just positive thoughts, positivity all around me. I can't remember exactly what she said, but yeah. but a moment you saw her kind of like break down for a second and then she looks at you and like, you know, the whole audience like knew that it was you. You were that beacon of light for her, right? Yeah, that is, right. It's kind of the whole tone and of the story is like yeah. you know, you're there serenading her, being that positive light for her, but... Um, I guess my question is, uh, did you feel an obligation, like a, a sense of obligation to make sure that you stayed strong for her so that, you know, when she looks at you, you, you rec- she recognizes that confidence and, and man, that- man, I, I think about, uh, one, I think about the vows that I, that I took when I, when I, when I married her, like when in our generation, I'm like, I'm 34 years old, when we're standing there at the altar and the pastor says, Hey, through sickness and health richer for poor, you're thinking about a, a common cold. You're thinking about taking your, maybe your wife to get her ankle uh, wrapped up. You are not thinking about hospice. You are not thinking about having to give your wife a bath. You are, you are not thinking about going to doctor's appointments, a doctor's appointments, and sitting outside in the middle of COVID. You don't know what's that. You're not thinking about none of that, man. So my obligation was, hey, I told you and a whole bunch of people that I love you, and I'm gonna be here no matter what. So that I, I yes, it was an obligation when I when I told her, when I got my knee dirty and I said I want to spend the rest of my life with you. That means the rest of my life. That means the good parts, the not so good parts, the storms, the success. That means I'm gonna spend my life with you. Oh my gosh, man of your word, man. Hey, yeah, God's man. Always, God's always watching, right? Absolutely. Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, my day, bro. Yo, so when it comes to your relationship with God, and I know uh, our relationship with God are, are, are somewhat personal, but uh, you know, when it comes to your relationship with God, how has your relationship with God strengthened? Or you know, did you have any resentment towards God? Like, tell yeah, us a little man. About how yeah, that, that good, man. Absolutely. You, uh, you, he took, he took away in my mind, right? In my mind, in my simple mind, he took away my love. He took away my life, but that, that's that's in, that's in my small life. When and when I when you when you are allowed or offered perspective, and I was kind of able to, to 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 get in her shoes and see what she had to go through every day, I wouldn't want to do that shit either. I I literally saw her, and when you talk about being strong, she would she, uh, CSL fluid would would build up in the back of her scar because the fluid didn't have anywhere to go. So on a weekly basis, we would have to go to the doctor and they would literally have to put a needle in the back of her head and drain out fluid and throw it into a trash can. So it's, it's one day we doing this and she was like, she want to see it, right? So I'm looking at her in her face and I'm like, oh, baby, you're doing so good. I'm looking at it. And then I go to the back of her head and they pull in this needle out. I'm like, oh, my God. And then, <laughs> and then I'm calling back to her. Oh, yeah, you look, you're doing so great. Dog. Like I, I had, I had to, because of the shit she was going through. Yeah, she, she went through some stuff, man. I, like I saw it, bro. She had staph infection. I had to put, I had to learn the SASH method, saline, administer saline, heparin every twelve hours. You had to take the medicine out the refrigerator, warm it up. You had to set a timer for ten minutes. At the top of the minute, you you administer two millimeters of medicine. You wait. Top of that minute, a minute to another two millimeters. You got it. Uh, 
you got to uh, sanitize it with gloves just to stay alive, bro. Just to still be here. She had to do all that. So my, my relationship with God strengthened when I decided to believe the stuff that I've been singing about for years. The stuff that they've been telling me about heaven for years. When I decided to believe that in heaven there's no sickness, there's no crying, there's no dying, there's no chemo, there's no pills, there's no radiation, there's no surgeries. She we gotta do that. So thank you, God. Because her life here was was hell. Thank you for, for allowing me to, to experience that. Thank you for trusting me with that responsibility. As I learned that not many people would have made it through that. Uh, a lot of people would have quit. Uh, but he trusted me enough to, to not. Whatever he saw in me was 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 trustworthy enough to 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 let me borrow one of his angels real stuff right she's in and, a better place yeah he, he had to t- he had to take her back yeah she's in a better place man 100 percent. is obviously no one deserves that and you know you you, you try to see the bigger picture you try to see yeah. the big picture but it, I, I i can't even imagine how tough it is when it when it comes to uh man it, for, uh, let me take a step back man i I'm trying to think of the right words to say, and this goes no, no. back. There are there aren't any. There aren't any. Don't, don't take that pressure off yourself, brother. <laughs> take that pressure off yourself. There's there's no words, man. There's 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 nothing. This shit sucks. There's no way around it. You just gotta you gotta deal with. It. Now, when it comes to mental health and your yeah. mental, and uh, you know this might be too personal, or it might be a personal question. It may not be, but well, good. But, like how your mindset is right now when it comes to relationships with your family and friends, when it comes to your community, when it comes to relation with your God, when it comes to, you know, anxiety or depression, happiness, uh, any of those, you know, feelings and, and when what that has to do with your mental health, how's your mental health doing right now? Oh, and it 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 uh it flutters. You know what I'm saying? Uh there are days when I when I'm sad, and I'm questioning. I find myself driving for thirty minutes, and there's no music playing. I'm just thinking, like, it's it's it, it's it's rough. But I'm a simple guy, man, and I try to simplify it as much as I can. Like, I understand now that none of us are gonna make it out of here alive. Not a not a single one of us. It, it, it's, it's it's never happened. It's never going to happen. So with that knowledge, if I know I'm getting out of here and at least I got this moment right now, I know what it feels like to be sad. I know what it feels like to be disappointed. I know what it feels like to to be depressed. But guess what? I don't want to feel like that. I'd rather feel happy. I'd rather feel joy. Yeah. I'd rather feel like I'm, I'm loved and supported. And the only difference in that feeling is a change in my mind. It's not a change in the environment. It's not a change in how people see me or treat me. No, it is a choice every day to wake up to either sadness and depression or joy and laughter. And mm-hmm. I'm going to do this shit as much as I can because I don't got long here. And that is the epitome of why I wanted to have this conversation with you. <laughs> Seriously, that what what you just said over the last... 25 seconds is Um, exactly why I wanted to have you on the podcast. And I'll tell you, because I tell my audience, I tell my viewers, I tell the podcast listeners every single time, happiness is a choice. Our thoughts are a choice. You have free will and you have the option to exercise your free will to turn negative thought patterns into positive thought patterns. Absolutely. And every single morning when you wake up, it is up to you. No one else, not the weather not your teacher or your coworkers or yeah, your you boss. Sit out here flat. You you no gas in your car. No, <laughs> it's up to you. 
it's up to you. And hearing it come from you, mm-hmm. someone who lost, you know, one of, if not the most important thing in your life, yeah, right? Where you are continuing to choose happiness because you have a choice. You could <laughs> solve and you can, you can lean into your sadness and you can wake up sad and depressed. Yeah. And I'm sure you do because that's natural. Right. Right. You, I had a lot. I, and that put a pin there. I allow myself to feel those feelings. I don't feel devalued because I'm sad. I don't feel like less of a person because, no, I went through a traumatic experience. I have the room and I have the opportunity and I have the I have the responsibility to feel those feelings because if I don't feel it, then I won't know what it feels like. If I know what it feels like, I'm going to try my best to get away from it. So you got you got to experience those feelings. You can't deprive yourself of feeling sad. You can't deprive yourself of feeling depressed. I I, I like in my heart. I learned this from a book called Unlearn. A guy named Humble the poet wrote it. He said, "Treat your heart like a hotel room." He says a hotel allows all its guests to check in and check out. So sadness, you got to check in time. You, if I want to be sad for an hour today. Okay, let me be sad. But when 59, 59, you got to check out. And what happens at a hotel? They clean that room. They sanitize it. They make it They make it good for another person to come in. So now I clean it out. And now I got room for happiness to live there. I got room because there's no even, there's not a sign that sadness was there. Because I cleaned it up. Sadness, you got to check in and you got to check out time. You got to check out, brother. Interesting. I like that metaphor a lot. That sounds great. What's the book called again? Unlearn. 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 I humble the poet. Humble the poet. Yes, sir. Now, when it comes to a lot of these things, as far as consciously being aware of your feelings and changing them and, you know, leaning into them within this hour and after that hour, time to get our yeah. head on. Let's move forward. The concept is very simple. Right. However, execution and actually doing it is a challenge. We all know we should put 20% of our income in for retirement. We all know we should get to the gym every day. We all know we should avoid sugar and right. alcohol, but exercising our free will and actually doing it is a problem. It's yeah, tough. Man. Challenge each and every single day. Now, are there times where you know you don't stay loyal to those commitments and maybe- yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> One thousand <000%. laughs> percent. But guess what? God still loves me. I still love me. I don't gotta be perfect. There was one person who walked this earth who was perfect, and they called him Jesus. My name is Rick. I was, <laughs> he he told me I'm gonna fall short. He mm-hmm. told me I'm not gonna get it right every time. He he told me I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get all this stuff wrong. But he also told me I'm gonna love you through all that. Now yeah. I don't I don't get myself comfortable and fall at all. Again, we know. So now I'm I'm applying more of the information I do. And I'm a, I'm trying to apply it and execute. But like you said, it's tough. Yeah. We got it we, it's a choice. It's a yep. choice. We're gonna do it. And I, I wanted to ask that question because over the last 17 minutes and 59 seconds, you seem oh, wait, like you the strongest. I missed I missed the first part of that, bro. Am I good now? Yep. Now, the reason why I asked that question, Ray, is because over the last 18 minutes, you seem like the strongest person I know. And you are one of the strongest people I know to go through that and and live to tell the story. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I wanted to add that human piece to that, that none of us are perfect. Yeah. You know, the, the listeners are listening like, oh, my gosh, this guy, Ray, he lost the love of his life. And he's still staying positive every single time. He, How does he do that? But no, it doesn't happen 100 percent of the time. We don't always stay loyal to our commitment. So to those people that are out there listening that are trying to get sober or trying to quit smoking mm-hmm. the vape or, you know, yeah. you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to, you know, build back some relationships that you might have ruined in the past. You're trying to deepen your relationship with God. Yeah. And none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect, but it's progress over perfection. And mm-hmm. as long as you get a little better each and every single time, a little better each and every single week, right? Continue to grow. And we're going to step into the greatest version of ourselves each and every single day. And then we're going to make an impact on our community. And we're going to continue to inspire others. Yeah, right? man. Because, you know, I I feel inspired that, uh, you know, li- life is short, man. And, like, and we oh, never, never know when our ticket's going to be called. We never, ever know when our ticket's going to be called. 
So with that being said, I, I, tr I've been better about it, but just like, yo, just do it. Do what I want to do today, man. Do it, bro. Tell me, <laughs> tell the audience, do no. it. <laughs> Actually, let me ask you this. Knowing now firsthand and yeah. seeing in real time how yeah. short life is and how you don't know when your ticket's going to be called. How does that change the way you live moving forward? I do it. I do. If I want to take a trip, I do it. If I want to treat myself to something, I do it. If I want to watch a movie, I, if I want to go out and enjoy the sunlight, I do it. Because I know someone personally who only wanted to go to Starbucks and Target. That's all she wanted to do. She wanted to go to Starbucks and Target. And she, she, don't, she doesn't get the opportunity to do that anymore. So now it is my responsibility. If I got a dream, if I got a goal, if I got a book I want to write, if I got a business I want to start, if I want to tell my, my dad I love him, if I want to tell my, my mom I love if I want to do something, I got to do it. Because this thing will be over soon. The dog, 50 is not a midlife crisis. Because we ain't living to 100. <laughs> no, you, you around 40, 30, depending on what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we this we on the back nine, bro. We gotta make we gotta make an impact. Right, we're on the back <laughs> nine, and we gotta live like we're on eighteen. Come on, we're man. On the tee box at eighteen right now, and we're bringing out the big stick, and we don't care if that ball slices <laughs> way, way to the right in the water because we're gonna swing with all the energy we got, man. What do we got to lose? What was that? <laughs> we guess what you are living right now. If it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you're living that. You already know what that feels like. But if it does, it could change everything. Perfect. Right, why man. would you not take that chance for yourself? Why, why not? We got to take chances. Because at the end of the day, we got nothing to lose. None of us are making it alive. You said it yourself, man. No one is getting out of this alive. Not LeBron James. Not Taylor Swift. Like It doesn't matter how much money you have. doesn't matter how famous you are. You are not getting out of here alive. Yeah, man. And to take that even a step further... There's going to be a time 300, 400, 500 years from now where no one even knows who LeBron James is. Yeah, no one even there. Taylor Swift is. They're going to be they're going to be such a distant memory. No one is going to know who King James is. So let's be real, guys. Like let's freaking just end it. Let's do all these things. And um, you know this this was an episode and this was a conversation that I wanted to have yeah. to not only help my audience but help me as well yeah. because. There is no way that I'm going to leave this podcast room and I'm just going to like plan out too far in the future. No, I'm going to make today count. I'm going to make yeah. today count, right? And and yeah. I like to exercise. I'm going to go swim a thousand yards. Yeah. I'm going to go, go for a walk and I'm going to go breathe fresh air. Because yeah. I don't think it's going to be called. And and that is a very important piece to, to, to mental health. And it's a very important piece for us to just be present yeah. right here, right now with what we got from where we're at. And be Tomorrow is not promise, and we never know when our ticket's going to be called. Now, Ray, let's let's talk a little bit about about your future, man, because I know you got a lot of amazing things coming up. Um, you were on America's Got Talent, right? <laughs> your amazing performance on America's Got Talent. Um, yeah, brother. I know you mentioned uh, if you want to write a book. I, I have a feeling that that's in the works. If it's not in the works, it should be in the works. You're, so you're, no. you're the thousandth not person to tell me that. So I got I got to start writing. I got journals all over this place, man. Oh so yeah, amazing. Well, um, before you tell everyone what uh, what you're up to in the next six months, I want you to know that um, I self published a book. It's called Live Better Now. It's right there. It's a guaranteed way for millennials and Gen Z to live it better now through health, wealth, and happiness. If you need help, my man. Yeah. I'm here to help you out. I just want to throw that out there. So if Absolutely. you got any questions uh, about uh, how to publish a book or something, please, please, I'll give you my number after this podcast. But tell Thanks. everyone else what you're up to for the rest of the year. What are some of your goals this year? Uh, so, yeah, man, I am I am starting a foundation for, for Rosalind. It's going to be called uh, Rosalind's Roses. Uh, and I'm going to use that uh, along with my public speaking career. I'm jumping into that. I'm not a, a stranger to the stage, as he said. I've... Uh, America's Got Talent of saying national anthems and stadiums and arenas, all types of stuff, man. So uh, I got a show tonight with my band. I love a microphone. <laughs> yeah, man, it's my birthday all week, bro. So oh, I got a show. I got a show tonight in Charlotte, North Carolina. Friday, I got another one. Uh, I got a few public speaking gigs coming up. 
and I'm also starting back my uh, my business that I started last year. Uh, it's a tax overage business. I have an asset recovery firm, and I help people recover money uh, after their property have been sold in a foreclosure. So a lot, a lot of people don't know that they can still profit from a foreclosure. So I'm able to find money for people who didn't had no idea that was theirs. I'm able to change some lives, man. Amazing. Wow, you got a lot of things going on. You got your hand yeah. in a lot of cookie jars there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got to do it all, man. I'm getting out of here soon, bro. That's it. Life's too short. We got to do it all. What do we yeah. got to lose, man? What do we got to lose? Let's be real. Right now, I'm living if nothing, if, if nothing works. I, I, I know what that feels like. I've been there. <laughs> to, uh, to all those people that have been listening on Apple, Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, you can connect with Ray at TheRaySingleton.com. Um, I will also drop his Instagram handle and his YouTube channel below in the podcast notes. Head over to his website. The The video of him on Ellen is just incredible. Dwayne Wade surprises him with a little FaceTime video. Yeah, and then they but... bring back Ray and Roslyn uh, sometime later. And dude, yeah. your reaction, dude, your reaction from when Twitch is like, he, you know, Twitch is like, uh, it's just like, yeah, D- Dwayne, Dwayne. And I just, I, kid you not i watched the video 10 times over just that was like 10 seconds where you're like you're like this <laughs> Yo. here i can tell you knew he was there bro and you were just like looking around you're like where where is he because well, they they pretty much lied to us the entire time so usually like the first time they put us back in the green green room in the regular green room but what happens is you can see the show on the tv screen so they didn't want us to know that the wayne wade was there so they put us in this other building. It was like, yeah, because of COVID protocols. Yeah, I'm talking about it's an old school facts. And they literally walk us straight on the stage. We usually walk backstage on this episode. They walk us straight on. And then when he said the way, I was like, oh, man, something fishy. <laughs> <laughs> something going on, man. And oh, when my. he came, I was like, yeah, that's D Wade. That's D Wade, bro. Wade. Yeah, man. He still hits me on out. We, we still talk every now and again and DM, man. That's like, oh. that's my boy now, man. Oh my gosh. Dwayne. Yeah. Hey, as a South Floridian, man, I am a huge Dwayne Wade fan. So <laughs> that is, that is really, really cool. Yeah. Ray, but- I want to I thank you so much for your time today, for uh, being transparent, being vulnerable, helping the audience with some wisdom. I know you're continuing to work on your own personal growth and self-development. This is just the beginning for you. Yeah, and man. You got a lot of stuff to uh, to work hard for. And um, if there's anything else you want to drop on the podcast or anything else you want to leave the audience with today? Well, no, I, want, I wanted to say thank you, man. This is, this is an important medium. This is an important platform. These are important conversations uh, to, to understand, hey, man, we're not perfect. If there's anything that you take from any part of this conversation y'all is live life man do it it's this that you will that you will get out of here soon hopefully hopefully god takes his time but you you don't got you don't got forever that's right so that's change right. that dream love on that person do, do, uh, fix that relationship uh uh, uh, uh self development go talk to somebody find a therapist do whatever you got to do to fix you because you got to be good before you can be good for anybody else. That's right. And, and the only reason we're here is to love on each other, man. That's it. That's right. There you go, guys. Spread love, not hate. Yeah. Ray, man, thank you a lot. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a happy birthday. 34 this 34, week? 34, yes, sir. Or I'm right behind you. I'm turning 33 in a couple months. So, That's uh, love, man. Great, man. <laughs> well, listen, have an amazing birthday. Good luck. Uh, with all your events coming up i know you're gonna kill it keep everyone updated man keep throwing up the content on youtube and on the website and on socials because uh a lot of these people that are that are listening to this podcast are gonna be checking you out here shortly so thank I you appreciate so your time dude. thank you absolutely man you have a great day and uh we'll connect again soon all right brother take it easy